All right, we're going to cover some things about actions and the NLA strip versus clip time. And I hope this helps make clear some of the more confusing parts of the interface. So right now I have the monkey head keyframed at frame um, 1 and 24. And we don't have an action created yet. The current action is just whatever the scene length is, you can define a manual frame range start and end. So here you can turn this on and it'll basically map it to the um, existing keyframes. And if I was to set this to 15, you can see that while the keyframes go to 15, uh, sorry, the keyframes go to 24, the, the custom range that the NLA will know about when it creates the strip, and you can see it's got dashed lines down here as well, will be limited to be 15 frames. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. And you can now see that with this selected, if I un unselect it, we can see in 3.3 .3, there's no um, clip information over here. When I select this, I can go to the strip menu and you can see here we have active strip and you can see that the frame end right now the frame start is 0 and the frame end is 15 for the strip and the action clip is 0 and 15 as well so we have this frame start here and frame end and we have the strip frame start and frame end and there's a little bit of confusion about how these relate so if we look at the clip itself, we know that if I tab into this, you can see that there are keyframes beyond the range of the strip. We also have sync, sync length off by default because we started with a manual range. If I turn this back on and I tab back out, nothing's going to happen because the um, manual frame range is overriding the length. I can try syncing and it still won't work. So if I tab in here and I turn off this range and I tab back, you can now see that the frame start and end have updated to reflect that the, the keys are 24 frames. I'm going to turn off sync length just for now. But we still don't have any difference between frame start up on the strip and frame start here on the clip. So if I were to change the end to 15, that is the strip, and if I move the start here, um, actually sorry, so it changes the end down here to 15. If I set this back to 24, directly editing this number is tied to the clip end, but if I change the clip end, This updates, but watch what now. Um, let me make this a little easier. I'll set this back to 24. Okay, so I'm going to move the start of this clip to frame 10. So now the strip time, the active strip starts on frame 10 and ends on 34. But the frame start and end for the clip itself is 0 to 24 because that is the actual source action. If I were to tab into this, we can see that it's 24 frames long. If I change the um, length of this to be 10 frames, the clip is, is editing how much of the original action we can see. But the strip start and end control when in time this action is going to play. So while I can change the start and end of the clip itself, the frame start and end here is a global position in time. So you'll always know that the action is, say, you know, starts on frame 0 and ends on frame 24. And no matter where I move the, the strip in time, you always know that there's 24 frames in this action, or you're using 24 frames. So that's how they relate. While they do interact with each other, 
If I have multiple clips, if I duplicate this, and I move both of them, here we can see, again, this is 162, 168, but we still have 24 frames of the action that's visible, that, and the action is listed here. And the same thing here. So again, if I change this action to be, you know, end on frame 15, then I have a global start and end time, but I'm only using 15 frames of the local action. And then we can repeat this, of course, and update how things look. You can go in and change whether it um, holds the action across multiple times or if it's going to just uh, hold forward and basically just blend from the end of this action to the other one. Uh, but I hope that helps you understand the strip, which is global start and end, and the actual frame start and end. And the reason that the end of the action updates with the frame start and end, because in previous versions of Blender, this actually changing this would actually change the scale of the clip, which is not what we want. We want to trim either locally or globally if you're trying to align a bunch of clips to be at a certain frame. But I don't want to have to come down here and figure out I only want 20 frames here and then try to move that back and figure out the difference. I want to be able to just move this to say I want the action to start on frame 20 and I want the action to end on frame 45 and then that's where the where the strip is going to live and then if I change my mind and decide that you know what I have keyframes beyond this and I want to use them now I can change the end to allow more of those keyframes to come through and or you know expose more of the keyframes from the action but that hopefully helps you understand the difference between the clip local time and the global strip time.